Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be here today. My name is John Cheeseman. I'm the director of Mossman Art Gallery in Sydney, Australia. And I'm here to talk about a project that we've put together uh, called Bungaree's Farm. Earlier today, in the introductory uh, talks, we heard that uh, that nexus of technology, the digital and the object was mentioned. And this is an exhibition or project that was put together really in the absence of the object. We were inspired by uh, images of the past, but they were sort of absent from the uh, exhibition or project itself. But we're also inspired by sight, uh, by history, by practice, by memory, by uh, artistic practices, uh, contemporary artistic practices as well. Um, one of the great unresolved issues in Australia, let alone Australian art and culture, is the dispossession of the Australian uh, Aboriginal people. Um, and the related issue of how we treat Aboriginal people in Australia. This exhibition was really about a, a high-tech, low-tech sort of a response uh, uh, by Aboriginal people, by Aboriginal curators and artists to how uh, they could address these questions using uh, the uh, Bungaree, Bungaree and Bungaree's farm as a sort of a, a central point where those ideas could come together. Um, today I'll be talking a little bit about Bungaree himself. We'll be looking at, uh, uh, I've got a video of the curator talking about the project as well that I'll show you. Uh, we'll talk about the process that we went through and we'll also show you uh, some snippets from the program itself and how it was actually realised within a, a site-specific context. Um, but before I do that, I want to actually teach you some Aboriginal words of what, in, what was supposedly a dead language in Australia, uh, the Biripai language in, in northern New South Wales. And uh, uh, Nabaya. I'd like you to actually say those words. Na ba ya. Na ba ya. That means ah, uh, it is so. Yeah, ah, it is so. And it's from a, a Biripai lament that was recorded by a missionary back in the early 19th century. And this was from an area that, that Bungaree was from. Now, Bungaree was. Oh, I'll just... No, how do I... Sorry. Ah, that and she... Okay. Now, this is a very f famous image of Bungaree. Bungaree actually had more portraits done of him than any person in early co colonial Australia. And yet, uh, up until a couple of years ago, he was virtually unknown to everyone in, the, in, in, the, in Australia. This famous uh, image, people knew the image, it looked like uh, an overdressed uh, Aboriginal person sort of making fun of him or making fun of himself in, in some ways. It's sort of a, 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 a sort of absurd image in, in many ways. Uh, but yes, it's, it's the most famous image with Von Green. Here he is uh, painted and he's wearing the colonial governor's uh, off, off cuts, he, uh, off, um, his uniform that he didn't need anymore. And uh, Bungaree and Bungaree's farm. Oh, why, why we went around with Bungaree's farm? Bungaree's farm, uh, the same governor, Governor Macquarie, gave him land, ironically, uh, in 1815. And last year was the 200th anniversary of, uh, of, of, that, um, of that thing. So he, it was really so uh, Aboriginal people could start to become farmers. To, to he was given a peach like a peach tree and uh, and, a, and, and a boat and uh, you know but the farm never worked of course but the issue of actually granting land back to Aboriginal people as a core issue was a part of the whole project and and something that we uh, were looking at Bunbury himself oh sorry it's uh, that one another one ah uh, so this is a this is a uh, an early map of Bungaree's farm. He was actually given one of the most glorious places in Australia. Uh, it's right at the entrance of Sydney Harbour. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, or 
uh, oh, sorry, it's a bit warped there, but Sydney was the first settled uh, place in Australia, and uh, Sydney, this is Sydney Harbour. Uh, in the, you see the South Head and the North Head. The Middle Head, right in the middle of the harbour there, was where the land was granted to Bungaree. Uh, and that's where Mossman is, and that's why Mossman Art Gallery is involved in this project. In fact, that's the view from Bungaree's farm today. You know, uh, you can see all the famous symbols of Sydney in the distance across the harbour. Uh, on the side of Bungaree's farm, it was controlled by the Navy for many years. And uh, they had these huge, old, disused oil tanks, uh, similar in, in scale and height to, to this room, and about the width of a football field. And there were, there's three of those identical, and they're actually camouflaged against Japanese attack on the, on the roof as well. That, that's a, uh, a camouflage roof as, as well. And that's, we wanted to use this as being on the side of Bungary's farm as a place to, to use for the project. A huge space. This is inside, and you can see it's very cathedral-like in, in a way. But how to fill such a space with an exhibition? You know, how to go about it as well? So these were some of the things that we were thinking about. Bungary himself uh, is a very fascinating person. As I said, he had more uh, portraits of himself done than any early colonial figure. He was the first, first he was a mariner. He actually sailed with many of the European sailors. He was the first person to first uh, person to circumnavigate Australia with Matthew Flinders, the, the great sailor in Australia. He uh, was also the first person ever called an Australian that we know of. Um, he um, he was called King Bungaree, and he was called King of the Sydney Blacks or Chief of the Sydney uh, of the Broken Bay Tribe, and. Uh, he, you can see him just in the foreground there in his uniform. He was first given a gorget, which is a, a, a sort of necklace sort of thing that was given as a, uh, by the governor as well. And that became a, a tradition along the way. He, he, it was so many firsts. The first lithograph in Australia was done of Bungaree. Uh, many are, Charles Dickens actually wrote about Bungaree in one of his novels and his uh, many wives. Uh, so there were many, many portraits of uh, the French, the Russians, people that were visiting Sydney would actually come and take portraits of Bungaree. But we had none of these objects for our exhibition. And to put our exhibition together, I, commi I, uh, uh, what I commissioned John Mundine, the foremost uh, curator in Australia of, uh, and an Aboriginal himself of Aboriginal art, to actually uh, come and put an exhibition together. So we can play that first video now. So this will be John talking about the process and the exhibition. My name is John Mundine and I'm the curator of uh, the Bungalow Farm project that was uh, uh, initiated to memorialise uh, the man, the original man, uh, Bungalow was uh, uh, initiated to memorialise uh, the man, the original man, uh, Michael Reed, who was the year in what is now called Sydney, when the British first came here in 1788. The project uh, runs along that theme of Aboriginal people are everywhere, and Aboriginal people do everything. Uh, Aboriginal people are all over Australia, and the first now called Sydney, the city of Sydney. So it was to bring his personality, his life,
Yes, yeah, so um, you heard John speak, speak about that. So the process too, I just want to speak about that a little bit now. So here we saw this image of, of Bungaree earlier. Uh, you can see in the background there are the ships of the Empire in the, in the background on Sydney Harbour. There was also similar images, which actually the bottom is cut off a little bit here, with his wife smoking a, 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 a fad. Uh, with grog bottles on the ground as well. So it was th this sort of combination of uh, noble savage and also the reality, what was happening on the ground, that was sort of reflected in the art that was coming, that duality of, of, of things. And uh, uh, the artist, uh, you know, played with that very much. So here you can see uh, some uh, reenactment of, of so, so that key figure, dressed up in uniforms and so on, with the government issued blanket and so on, on the shores of Sydney Harbour, on the, on the side of Bungaree's farm. And as part of the process of, uh, of developing it, we, uh, we, you know, we actually camped on Bungaree's farm, we brought in Aboriginal historians, we brought in like, uh, uh, European historians, we brought in activists, we brought in contemporary art makers, filmmakers, dramaturgs, all to work with a band of uh, visual artists to come up with the content for uh, this project. Uh, here you go, you can see uh, some more reenactment. And uh, this is an early sort of rendition of what one of the artists saw as Bungaree, as traditional man, as sailor, as farmer, as the, the sort of uh, costumed Bungaree. And we, it was important too, in a site specific sense, we were going to display the works in those oil tanks. So we actually used the oil tanks as a studio too to actually to film in there. We, we wanted that react, like to actually film on site in that way. And here's some stills from some of the, uh, from some of the things too. And I'll show you actually live uh, images now of some snippets from uh, the program. It ended up being a 45 minute uh, program, a compendium of about uh, 25 different artworks. Yeah, uh. I'm Bangaree. I'm an Aborigine. I am Bangaree. I am an athlete. I'm Mungari. No one chooses me.
building dead. Of the children dead. Friends, England dead. The burdens of some people lay scattered on the tracks for a bed. This is not what we call hell. out of time. I just want to show a couple of slides and then I'll be, be finished. So, uh, so that's a, just some snippets of, uh, of the project. Uh, as I said, it goes for 45 uh, As I said, it goes for 45 minutes and it's a compendium of about 25 different artworks. Um, just in terms of how it looked in the space, uh, you saw a, a, a sliver of it there. Imagine it as the size of this roof in an enclosed space. Uh, we talked uh, about immersive experiences. It was a completely immersive experience. We also had whispers in the round space. Sound was a very strange sort of thing. So uh, we had other sound design aspects going around that would fill the space at any time. And, and whispers would run along the walls uh, as, as you were in the, the tank. Um, again, uh, we, you know, we created some spaces. Uh, Animation was part of what we did. There was a, a, an installation in the middle, uh, which you would have seen John Monbine speak in front of, and, and that's now an installation at the front of Mossman Art Gallery. Uh, but, but it was uh, put in uh, the tanks for this exhibition. Um, yes, so just some examples of how it actually looked and was realised in the space. So really, um, the, the exhibition uh, used digital media, it was essential to actually fill the space to create a monumental scaled exhibition uh, with very little money really 
and very, you know, uh, and with the heritage uh, restrictions and so on. Uh, it was essential that we actually used uh, digital sound and image uh, to fill the space. Um, it also created new ways of Aboriginal art practice in Australia. It created a new space. It was the first time that space had ever been used for cultural uses. So it created a new space as well. And uh, we'll be working. It's also inspired us to work on further iterations and further developments in this largely this story that, that keeps unfolding in Australia today. Okay, thank you very much.